T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. time to take longer strides, time for a great new American enterprise, time for this nation to take a clearly leading role in space achievement, which in many ways may hold the key to our future on Earth. First, I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long-range exploration of space. The space race grew out of the Cold War between the United States and the Soviet Union, the most powerful nations after World War II. For half a century, the two superpowers competed for supremacy in a global struggle, pitting a democratic society against totalitarian communism. Space was a crucial arena for this rivalry. Before a watchful world, each side sought to demonstrate its superiority through impressive feats in rocketry and spaceflight. Secret satellites kept a wary eye on each adversary while both made astonishing advances in reaching the final frontier. October 4th, 1957 was both a remarkable and frantic day. The United States had come out of the Cold War as one of the most powerful nations in the world, but however still in fear of the Soviet Union. The military arms race and technological advancements soon led to proposals of one day achieving astronomical feats. But the Soviets were ahead of the game. Only a few years after the United States announced plans to place a satellite in space, the Soviets launched Sputnik 1. Nothing in our history has ever made it so far into our universe, but the Soviets were able to. It was only about the size of a small beach ball, but that small device was revolutionary in our progress in space. And with such great tension between the United States and the Soviets, the space race began with the Soviets taking the early lead. The U.S. was in shock. They had not expected the Soviets to be not only successful in launching a satellite, but launching a properly functioning one before their own Project Vanguard had even finished. Soon, fear of Soviet ability to send ballistic missiles in space and the potential for a space arms race led to fear and panic. The U.S. needed to act in order to prevent another fear of Soviet takeover. As a result, the National Aeronautics and Space Administration, or NASA, was born. The U.S. was on a full mission to improve their space program, in addition to improving math and science throughout its country in order to compete with the Soviets. Immediately everyone thought, well, they're now able to really send their, their military machines around the world up above who is not going to be in danger. However, the Soviets stunned the U.S. once more only a month later with Sputnik 2, this time carrying Laika the dog as its passenger. Even though the mission did not plan for the dog to return safely to Earth, it did prove that living beings could survive in space. Laika managed to stay alive for a few hours after reaching space. However, the thermal insulation became too hot at the nose of the shuttle that held Laika, which resulted in his death. The mission became a major breakthrough as scientists were finally able to record and analyze data on the health effects that space has on living organism behavior. On April 12, 1961, the Soviets accomplished another feat that put the U.S. even further behind in the space race. Vostok Space Program of the Soviet Union was responsible for developing the technology for human spaceflight. Vostok 1 carried the first human passenger, Yuri Gagarin, and Vostok 1 was a successful mission marking history with the first human ever to reach space, as well as the first successful orbit around the Earth. The world spotlight was back on the Soviets, and the U.S. congratulated their opponents on their accomplishments, but were also aware that they needed to improve their efforts in order to stay in the race. The, the, the real challenge that uh, we coped with was the challenge of Sputnik, the international competition uh, with the Soviets, uh, 
they're putting a dog in space, then Yuri Gagarin, and uh, made one orbit before we could even make a suborbital flight. But then, less than a month after that, the president said we're going to send a man to the moon and bring him back safely. And uh, this was in May of 1961. On January 31st, 1958, the U.S. launched Explorer 1 following the launch of Sputnik 1 into space. This satellite was designed to measure the radiation environment in Earth's orbit. Although the satellite wasn't very successful in gaining scientific research, Explorer 1 gave NASA the confidence to enter back into the space race and gave our citizens the confidence that we could compete with the Soviet space technology. We were back in the space race and would soon better our technology that would put us ahead of the Soviets. With the target launch date set on February 21, 1967, Apollo 1, the first mission of the U.S. Apollo Manned Lunar Landing Program, was said to be the first manned mission to the moon. In response to the Soviets' first man in space, Kennedy announced his commitment to landing a human being on the moon before the decade was over. On January 27, 25 days before the actual launch date, a blazing fire sparked in the cabin during a launch pad test, killing the three astronauts inside, Command Pilot Virgil Grissom, Pilot Edward H. White, and Pilot Roger B. Chaffee. Due to the early failure of the mission, NASA lost complete confidence in their ability to land a man on the moon. Due to this incident, NASA halted the program for a year. It appeared as if the United States would not be able to keep up with the Soviets in the race for space exploration. It was like a stomach punch for everyone in the program, and everybody, no matter what role they had or what part they had in it, I think had a sense of guilt about it. Compared to Apollo 1, Apollo 7 proved a success. It was the first manned mission since the oxygen fire in Apollo 1. Apollo 7 remained in Earth's orbit for 10 days and returned some confidence into U.S. space technology. However, just days after the mission was complete, rumors of the Soviets putting a man on the moon caught the ears of NASA and the United States. Despite these rumors, Apollo 7 led to the launching of Apollo 8 on December 21, 1968, only this time making a lunar orbit around the moon. The crew was able to make the journey safely as well as be the first to see the far side of the moon directly. Its accomplishments paved the way for the ultimate goal of landing a man on the moon. First time three people saw the far side of the moon. Uh, first time that we had gone so far. And the first time that we saw the Earth from 240,000 miles away. So in that respect, I kind of thought that Apollo 8 was really a milestone and a, and a high point of my career. Seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6. At 9.32 a.m., the Saturn V's giant engines roar to life. At the viewing stand, three miles away, spectators feel the thunderous drumbeat of unearthly power pounding their chests as the heat of the rocket's exhaust washes over them. When that rumble came across the ground, it was like somebody was putting their hands on your chest and pressing. It, I almost couldn't breathe. It was so unbelievable that the United States was going to send two men to walk on the surface of the moon. It was almost unthinkable. Although there were high expectations for landing on the moon and running into a conflict was prohibited, the mission almost failed on an abrupt landing. After three days in space, Apollo 11 and its astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin prepared for their descent onto the moon. They experienced many alarms and alerts in the middle of their landing procedure, and Houston gave them a go for landing. With their lives on the line, Armstrong and Aldrin slowly and safely approached the surface of the moon okay, and proved to the uh, world that the United States was on top. Getting back up to that first step, uh, it's, uh that isn't collapsed too far, but uh, it's adequate to get back up. I'm gonna step off the limb. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind.